questions. I don't. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm an expert on this, but well, answer what I can. Yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, are there? Um, so, as I mentioned before, some of you came here. Analytics and recommendation, correct if I'm wrong, will not be used in Canvas because it doesn't work in Canvas, correct? So, you could have you do a hands-on in a D12 person to make up and with some fake data, but that would have been really hard for us to do, so we're not going to do it. It doesn't make sense to do it. But what we thought instead was to actually invite you all to a Canvas sandbox, the, uh, the sandbox that we've been using. We just changed the picture on it each time. And have you start looking at it. So I'll plug you in real quick here and okay, step through on. the... So I believe that Karen has sent you all an invite. Um, unless you just showed up, probably. Yeah, I think um, pretty much everyone who's here already was in it. All right. Yeah. I think so. Just check it out. What's up? I'm having a problem. Put your hand up. Um, so on your dashboard, you should see one here that says analytics and recommendation. And you just click on that. Um, go ahead and start using their activity sheet um, and look under first analytics, which is right over here, and you'll be able to see all the things going on there. So, any initial thoughts, questions for Sharon about her experience? And then we'll have some her experience with analytics and recommendation in B12. And then we're going to give you some hands on experience with Canvas analytics. And then we'll be able to have, I think, a better conversation about everything. But I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any quick questions that were burning in your brain. Okay. Oh, we might care. Uh, sure. Yep. Didn't think about that. <laughs> I am a. Sometimes you just look at the sign in sheet to me. You're not on that sign. Have any of you used analytics, some sort of learner analytics in any um, any way before? Google yeah. Analytics. Yeah, well, I'm kind of in the same boat you were up your first semester. I tried AR this semester, mm -hmm. and I just didn't have a lot of time to really use it, mm -hmm. or to figure out how I would use it. I like the ideas of it, which mm -hmm. is why I want to do it. Good in theory, not so good in practice. Well, I just, yeah, need to devote time to it, I guess, or figure out exactly where it's how did you divide, how did you define analytics? Do you, you pull up the screen again? Is that on your computer? Um, so by definition of analytics, there are many that are online. So I, I got mine from a, a higher education website. Refers to the my computer's not plugged in. Anymore. Oh sure. Yeah. Refers to the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about the progress of learners progress of learners and the context in which learning takes place. <laughs> there is actually, UW-Madison has, we have our own definition of learning data, which very closely matches that. That's one that, <clears throat> so Kim Arnold is kind of the learning analytics guru on campus, and the quote that Sharon pulled up is one that she quite frequently uses. Yeah. But we do, we do have um, a UW-Madison specific definition as well. And that's, that's helpful, um, and it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's just like using data for the purposes of learning, basically. Right. Uh, and even take that further away from the official you know, yeah, definition. But uh, the, the point is, um, you can use, you don't have to just use like software, I, at least I have in the past, you don't have to use like a specialized software for analytics to really do a lot of the same things. Um, I know at Learning UW and other learning management so um, software, they're going to have um, really good data on like quizzes. And I remember right. I used a lot of times in the courses I I've used, um, I've broken down the quizzes by questions and looking at and kind of breaking out. I use my quizzes very much as formative exercises. Mm -hmm. And I looked at each question um, as, as I went through to see where the students were really doing poorly. And I could really get a good idea just by using that small data set to get an idea of where the students were struggling uh, in the course, what concepts I, weren't, I was not covering very well. And that way, next time I taught, next, the next session, so if I gave a quiz on Thursday night, I would look at that data. And on Friday night, I would use 
you know, analytics, but just in a very small mm -hmm. subset, very refined, to really focus on, say, the French Revolution, because I'm teaching history, and really understanding what was the big deal about the Bastille, you know? So mm -hmm. really drilling in to use that information to help students learn better. And it doesn't have to be in this big suite of software. It's just using math, <coughs> data, <coughs> crunching the numbers, and seeing where the students are and where they stand. And that, to me, I, I remember the students were thinking, that really helped out, because I really struggled with that. It's like, yeah. I know, because I saw the questions. And yes. So yeah. yeah, so I like that too, and I, I really like that feature in D2L with the quizzes that you can go back and look at every question. Yeah. And and I just like it, you know taking a screenshot of that and showing them the data, like what percent missed that yeah. and what they got, is a great teaching tool. So I hope that stays in campus. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that, that brings up a, a, a point about like <coughs> our brains are really good at recognizing patterns ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and we don't need the numbers necessarily to have the numbers crunched for us. And sometimes when the numbers are crunched in the predictive analysis, you know, as you mentioned, they're way off. And we look at it, we're like, that's not right. So sometimes we can like push away from it, but we also have to sort of keep in mind that this is alpha version, and of course it's going to be terrible. You know, the first time Alexa came out, I'm sure it was awful, but it's getting better. Well, and one other thing I want to point out is that learning analytics, as Lane just pointed out, is an extremely broad umbrella. And there are a lot of different kinds of learning analytics, and it's all very much in its infancy. Yeah. Um, so what Sharon's talking about here is a specific kind called predictive analytics, which is specifically, can we use historical data to help predict, predict future, future student performance? And it is extremely alpha <laughs> in, in the way that it's thought out and in the software that's implemented. Um, but just so you're aware, there's going to be an increasing number of these kinds of tools that are going to become available on campus. And there's one actually right now for Canvas specifically called Snapshot that's going to be coming soon. It's not currently a predictive tool, but it's one that gives you some nice visualizations like Sharon was talking about. Easy way to kind of quickly visualize how students are doing. Um, but eventually it's going to have more and more different kinds of data fed into it. So there's this idea of a learning analytics dashboard where you're taking multiple data points from the multiple things, uh, and it will give you, the instructor, some ability to customize what do I want to measure and at what rate to help me understand what my, how my students are doing, how they're interacting with course <coughs> content, uh, and you know, are there students I need to reach out to kind of thing. So in the next five to 10 years, this may become pretty standard mm -hmm. in classroom software. So, so that idea that I could say, are students doing a sample test, and are they doing this assignment, and this one, and I can ignore the other parts is Right, and, and exactly how granular, I mean, the, the, like I said, the, the idea of the dashboard is like, you would take learning management system data, you would combine that with data from pattern, which mm -hmm. is student entered data, <coughs> also combine that with student information system data, and you'd have that all in a dashboard, mm -hmm. and then you'd have some ability, and what exactly that customizable ability is, is impossible to predict at this point, but that's, that's the future that we're going to, is this ability to pull from multiple points and combine it in a single dashboard. And James, are we piloting that already, Snapshot? Do we have faculty it, that? No, so we will be piloting in the spring, and actually if you're interested, um, let me know, because we can get you signed up. Um, but again, it's, it's not predictive like a &R, but it, it does, give you some kind of data visualizations about students and their performance in the class that you're not going to get straight up in Canvas. Right. So let's take a few minutes to look in, into the uh, what analytics there are and you can follow along. You should all be teachers, instructor level, people in this Canvas course, and you should be able to get to that kind of this analytics uh, and see what it looks like. And it might be fun to see what it looks like for students. Maybe um, in a little bit, Karen, you can change me to a student and I can go see what. No, because I haven't done anything. I'll change you into a student and, and then you can come plug in and we'll see what it looks like. If that's interesting. Sure. Who did the work? Uh, oh, wait. As a student, you don't yeah. see anything as a student. You don't see anything as uh -uh. a student. Okay. okay. But if you turn me into a student, then my stuff will show on yours. Great. Which I did a bunch of stuff, so yeah. Well, we'll, start, we'll start off by looking at So this is all of the, and we don't have a lot of activities in this course, right? We have not made a lot of things. Oh, we have some, and so you can see what that looks like over the course of the semester. If you click on individual ones, you can see that. 
I've been putting for people looking at this, but only one person participated in whatever it was that that is, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it's activity. Um, actual submission, watch the PowerPoint slide on week one, missing 100%. I don't know what that, that actually means. Um, I think Ooh, this one was done on time. I can teach you how to test. All right, that's good. And then if you look at individuals, Julie, I'm going to pick on you here. Um, you can see that Julie did 46 page views, six participations, 20 submissions. None of them are on time. <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> and then if we click on her individually, we can see, you know, we haven't communicated with her. Um, there was only one message. Yeah, I sent her a message. All right, you sent her a message, but you can't see what that is. But you can see that there is a message. Huh. So it it's is. not a lot of <clears throat> For any of you yeah, at um, Catherine Arnett, Arnett Smith's talk on campus last spring, so we had, we almost got in trouble because we had something to talk about campus before campus was officially announced. Um, but it was in the, in the service of learning. Um, <coughs> she had, was an early pilot, and she did not like the elements in Canvas compared to D2L because she could see more specifics in D2L that she couldn't canvas. I think that she was talking about the service stuff. You can't actually see what it is that they're doing. It's got nice graphs. That's not true. Um, if you change it to the chart view, oh, you then right. you get a much more specific breakdown uh, by date. And then, so are you within a particular student right now? Julie. Yeah. Um, so she hasn't done a lot. But there, so see now like down days. here, you're starting to get more submissions. You probably see more if you were in mine. Yeah. So it does have a little bit more. So yeah, there's there's the sort of detail. Now, if you tried to do this with 700 students, yeah. well, right, you wouldn't right. have to because you can just look at the right. ones that were right. flagged, mm -hmm. right? So that's some, that's good. And then you can actually see the grades, um, watch PowerPoint. And I wonder what this performance means. Is this it, relative? Anyone know? I'm sorry? Or it says performance. Is that relative to other students? But that's just watching. Yeah. But time spent. Yeah, I wonder if, it, I mean, if that means time spent or if that mm -hmm. means that she actually did watch it. And nobody else did, so everybody else gets a board and she got good because she did it. Mm -hmm. These are all questions that we don't know the answers right. to yet. Yeah, like why doesn't it say excellent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't watch the whole thing. Maybe you just watched five seconds of it. Jack, 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 um, see, I don't see any score there, and it says NA, right? So right. I wonder if it's sort of more of a uh, pass fail or, you know, um, you know, just a word uh, grading as opposed to. Yeah. Yeah, and if she didn't do anything, then it's good because she at least looked at it, but not excellent because she didn't do anything with it. I don't know. So yeah, this is like this is good detailed, and and you're right, Karen. It's much better than the graph. I guess the graph is just a a quick sort of snapshot of thing. Hey John. I'm, I'm curious, your list you put up earlier about stuff for next semester, is anyone coming in who's started looking more deeply at Canvas analytics to kind of take another stab at it? Uh, not yet. <laughs> um, we will have, Kathy talking about gradebook schemes, she might talk about that, but I don't think so. Um, Jonathan Brunner might talk about it when he does student peer grading. Um, but not yet. And then I guess Sue and Laura might talk about it to speed grader. Um, the, the, the reason I ask is usually what I've found is a lot of analytics stuff gives you so much you're overwhelmed. And if we can find someone who starts identifying what's really relevant and you know, of these hundred things, here were the seven that really proved useful. Yeah. Um, that would be a great a great thing to get back. 
Are you moving to campus? No, for your 800 I, students. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on doing yeah, that. Yeah, next right. week I'm just gonna flip on the door. Live. Learning to use that is like mm -hmm. on my summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if you know, going back to the A, if you have um, suggestions of people who are doing yeah. this, send them to those three grading canvases and because they will be by proxy um, presenters. Say, Mike, what was your experience with that? What do you find useful for that? So let's think about other ways that um, students can see how they're doing relative to the rest of the class. James. I would also say that that's actually snapshot, which is coming, is going to be a student, have a student facing component, where they will see how they're doing relative to the rest of the class on um, assignments and quizzes. Or how they're doing against the, the aggregate of the class, is a better way to put it. Or class average. Not hotel analytics. And uh, the other, other kind of sea change with the snapshot is, like with ANR, the instructor has complete ability to, to give students access or not. Whereas with snapshot, students are going to have access no matter what. There's nothing that the instructor can do about that. Is it called something else and it's relabeled snapshot for us? Is it the if I were to Google it, where would I find it? Yeah, well, it's uh, Unison. It's a Unison tool. Oh, so it doesn't exist yet? Uh, it's in beta. And so we will have a beta pilot right. in the spring with it. Uh, but I do know that uh, campus leadership <coughs> has a uh, yeah, there you go. 